Well, we're next door. We've come over here to the driveline experts. I want to introduce you to James. James has been taking care of drivelines for 12 years. And he's going to show us what's wrong with ours, what needs to be done. He's going to give us some close-up examples of uh, some of the problems that exist with these. He's going to show us some of the tools that he uses to uh, make them right. The first thing that we want to do whenever we get a driveline on a bench is to um, just do a general overall inspection of the drive shaft. So we'll start with our basic moving parts, which in this case on this front shaft is going to be our steady bearing. So you want to give it a, you want to first obviously look for uh, cosmetic damage, which there doesn't seem to be any here. But then you just want to give everything a feel, see, see if the rubber shrunk inside the bracket. This is a lot looser than how a brand new one would feel. So this is probably, I would say, maybe halfway through its life. You said that's about 50% of its life? Yeah, I would say, knowing, knowing how a brand new bearing feels, it's quite tight. So I would say that this is at least probably 50% worn. All right. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, uh, I'm going to take this yoke off. I'm going to back the nut off this yoke here. So James is going to take off the yoke next. Go ahead. Make noise. So the reason I take the nut off here is I just want to make sure that this yoke is not loose on the stub here. Uh, if it is loose, I either have to change at least the yoke itself, or if it's really bad, I have to change the yoke and the stub, which means cutting it out of the tube and having to do a weld on it. But in this case, it feels pretty good and tight, so I think we can save that. So what's next? So next, we're gonna check uh, the U-joint on the front shaft here. So obviously, the first thing you wanna do is just give it a feel and see how it feels. This one feels pretty rough. It sort of feels clicky, like it's skipping a couple of a couple of steps. I can actually see it kind of. It, what yeah. I feel is kind of, it's kind of going thunk, 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 thunk. So that tells me that it's starting to brunel inside these caps. So we'll take the caps off the other side. This is a really good way of telling where your U-joints are at. You just take the cup off, wipe the grease away. And that surprisingly looks not too bad at all. There's a little bit of shadowing. You can see where the needle bearings are starting to wear into the journal. We'll flip it around, see what the other side looks like. We were just talking about the inner axle on the uh, left there. We're not going to worry about that one. So this is the shaft that we're going to be lengthening in order to make it work for this truck. So same thing on this one. There's obviously no steady bearing here, but we want to check the U-joints. So same thing, just pull the cups off, wipe the grease away from the journals. And you can see very clearly on this one, the damage oh, yeah. to the journal. Can I just turn this yep. a bit? We'll get the... You can see all the scoring on top. Check the other side here. Well, this one's not as bad as the last one we just looked at, but you can still see the lines. Oh yeah, running this way. Yeah. And that's that's the called the other side. It's got some some marks on it too. Well, that's called brunelling. So that's when the needle needle bearings start to dig into the journals. So because this is a different type of drive line, this has an extra component to it that is also very important. 
and that's the that's the slip and slide. So really, the best way to check these this particular style of slip and spline is to remove the boot first of all. And the boot is held on by these two clips. And Something that's really important that you have to remember when you take this apart is that this is a this is right now a balanced drive shaft. So when you ever take take something apart, you have to make sure that you mark it, whether it be with a felt or a file or something that's going to put a mark in it, so that when you put it back on, it goes back on the same way. So I'm just going to mark it here with this diagram. I like to use a die grinder because these marks aren't going to disappear or fade or anything like that. So even though we're going to be modifying this drive shaft and rebalancing it anyways, it's always a good habit to get into to mark all your removable components on the drive shaft. And then you want to try to get the shafts in its original running position in the truck, which will be about there. Grab a bar for leverage. I'm going to pull it out of the vise. Grab a bar for some leverage and just lift up on the drive shafts. Let's see if there's any play there. I don't see any play at all. I'll try it from a different angle. So that's a good slip and spline. So we can reuse that when we go to Lake Bay's dry shop. So I think um, that's pretty much it. We'll, uh, we'll change all the U-joints and uh, change your steady bearing. Um, and make it longer. And then we'll make it longer, do some welding and some balancing and get these things ready to go. It's a private interview, do you mind? Well, go ahead, James. Mention how we're going to have to change uh, because of the different yoke sizes. So because we removed the front diff, uh, which would have housed this U-joint originally, what we've done is remove the front diff and we've brought the rear diff forward. Now the rear diff has a different U-joint series yoke on it, which, which is this one here. This is the drive shaft that used to be between the two differentials. So what we're gonna have to do to make this work is I'm gonna have to remove this yoke from this main drive shaft and replace it with a yoke that carries the smaller series of U-joint, which our rear diff is, is, is attached to. 